Wednesday, August 25th, 1943. Ten months ago, I stopped writing this diary. This evening, I have taken it out of my drawer to have Maman put it in a safe place. Once again, I've been told that I should not be at home at the weekend. Almost a year has passed, but Drancy, deportations, and suffering continue. Many things have happened. Denise has married. Ellen Baer was a young woman in occupied Paris who was keeping a journal and also studying uh, literature at the Sorbonne, so her journal was very stylized. I was abruptly assailed by the feeling that I had to describe reality. Just the walk back from Rue Marguerite was a whole world of facts and thoughts, images and reflections. She very subtly began to document in her journal the persecution of Jews in occupied Paris. And I am determined to put down on these pages everything in my head and in my heart. In March of 1943, she was arrested and taken to Drancy, a transit camp on the outskirts of Paris, where she was deported to Auschwitz. She was later transported from Auschwitz to Bergen-Belsen, where she was beaten to death five days before the liberation of the camp. This exhibition focuses on, on an individual and her family because of the scale of destruction that uh, is a characteristic of genocide. You also have this loss of identity for all the hundreds of thousands or millions of, that are murdered. So a focus on individuals and also by extension working with descendants to continue to preserve and share these stories is an important way to in increase understanding of the loss. Rosie's parents met each other in uh, Europe after the war. Her father had previously had a wife and children and lost his entire family. They married, they came to the United States, lived in Cleveland for a while, and arrived in the mid-1950s in Tucson. And we have this iconic image of the Newmans arriving on the tarmac of Tucson International Airport. And we believe that they are among the first, if not the first, Holocaust survivors to resettle in Tucson. My mom used to speak in schools, and when I used to go with her, I would always tell the students that they are the last generation that will get to see a Holocaust survivor in person. And when people come around and say it didn't happen, it was very important for them to remember and speak up and say, yeah, they, it did happen because I met one of the survivors. And I think, I think the story of the Holocaust teaches us that it is our job as humanity to not let that happen again, that we have to learn to be compassionate and understanding and embrace all mankind. I'm restoring the, the family house. I was cleaning out the closet. In the back of the closet, I found a shoebox, um, an old shoebox. And in that old shoebox was this story. And I took it and read it, and I called Rosie up. I said, you got to see this, uh, because there were many things in there I had never known. I never knew he saw his mother killed. Um, well, I thought she had been taken away by the Nazis. I didn't realize that that had occurred. He said that he, he never tried to be a really warm, fuzzy dad because he knew what it felt like to lose somebody that was very close to you and he didn't want us to love him that much so that if something happened to him, we would feel that loss. I never heard that. <laughs> That's interesting. They didn't talk much about what happened. We would get snippets here and there, uh, many things in that in that manuscript we had no no idea of. And then when the Swedish Red Cross came and rescued them, brought them to the hospital, my mother actually nursed my father back to health. Uh, she came out of the Holocaust healthier than, than he did. He, he weighed 70 pounds when he came out of the Holocaust. That's basically how they met. And mom worked in the kitchen, so she had more access to food, and, and so she, she was not emaciated the way my dad was when he came out. My father lost children, his own children. My mother was much younger, and so her life changed when she was 17. She was really young, and she lost her mother and um, seven brothers and sisters, and she dwelled on that a lot.
there was a sad side to them, but there was also a happy side. It's inevitable that we all come to an end at some point, and it's allowed me to accept a lot of the horrible things that can happen in life uh, and see that it, life can still go on. Coming here and just being alone, I think they were very lonely when they first got here. But, um, but as we grew and they became friends with our friends' parents and stuff, they, they, they found their niche. Rather than calling them Holocaust survivors, they were Holocaust victors. They won. They didn't just survive. They walked out of hell alive and made a life for themselves and lived a long, fruitful life and built a family. Even though they lost all their family, they built a new family. So they were not, they're not just survivors, they're victors. Mm -hmm.